In this CSS lesson, we will demonstrate how to embed cool or custom fonts into your web design project. We're going to take care to make sure it works in all modern browsers, including Internet Explorer. First, let's take a look at the finished product. Let's look in Internet Explorer first. And there it is in Internet Explorer. Now let's look in Firefox. And there she is in Firefox. Now let's look in Google Chrome. There it is in Google Chrome. And now let's take a look at Safari. There it is in Safari. And there's other browsers you could test it out with, but I'm pretty sure it works in all of them. So you can take a good look at that, and you can see that my first paragraph has a cool custom font applied to it. And like usual, I'll place the code with the video on the same page at my site. And I'll link it up for you guys, just in case you want to grab the code real quick and experiment with it. You can see I have the very simple beginnings of a web document here. It's an HTML file and I named it index.html like it's the home page of my website. You can see the only two tags or elements that I have it play inside of the body tag there are two paragraph tags. The first paragraph we assign a class attribute and we give it a name of my font class. And this is the content that we wish to apply a custom font to. And you can see this other paragraph tag has no class attribute. So this one will not get our custom cool font applied to it. And that's all we have to consider about the HTML for this simple example. Any content that you have inside of an element with the class set up for my font class will have the custom font applied to it. Even if it's a div or whatever kind of tag. Now let's quickly expand the CSS. We'll discuss it, talk about some considerations, and then we'll have the code available for you guys. Now the font face syntax that you see here is a part of CSS that allows you to embed custom fonts, really elegant fonts or creative fonts that wouldn't normally be installed on a user or all your visitors computer so they won't see it. So this syntax gives you a way to embed the custom font. Now this was introduced in CSS version 2 and then it was taken out I believe in CSS version 2.1. And now in CSS3, I think they're making it a standard once again. Now where you see it in place here the first time is for Internet Explorer. So let's make ourselves a note. So this one says for IE browsers. And this one is in place for all other browsers. So let's put a note there too. Okay, so this one is for IE browsers. And this one is for most other browsers. Now you'll notice that the first thing we're doing is setting the font family. And you can name that pretty much anything you want. That's all I did is I renamed my font files to any custom name that I wanted to put on them. And then we use the source to specify the URL to the actual font file. And it's very important that you have these font files on your web server online. You have to FTP these two font files, the EOT and the TTF version, both, to your web server. Put them in your CSS folder, but you have to make sure that you FTP the font files themselves to your web server or else people that don't have these files installed on their machine they're not going to see your cool custom font and actually down here in this font class let's go ahead and put a comma and then we'll put Arial and let's put all of these and those will be the ones that will show up just in case the A font doesn't work okay so now you understand that for Internet Explorer you have to have a .eot type font file and for others you have to have a .ttf the true type font so this is caught by Internet Explorer and this is caught by all other browsers and you don't have to put in a special catch or condition you can just list them both just like that and it'll work in all the modern browsers and the last little bit of CSS are the style properties that we're assigning for the my font class for this we just want to affect the one paragraph or maybe you want to affect a certain div on the page. Now I had it set like this before and that'll work just fine but if that font doesn't happen to process or get picked up then a default maybe Times Roman font will be used by the browser and you don't want that so you want to add some backups and I'll just add the Arial and these are just like fallback fonts so if a font isn't available it's the browser is going to fall back to Arial. If Arial is not available, the browser software will fall back to Helvetica and so on and so forth. However many commas and fonts that you want to put in place there. But you won't need to put too many because most people have Arial. 
Ariel will probably get picked up first. Now we can also take this and add uh, all kind of things to it like letter spacing. If your font happens to be really jumbled close up letters you can put this to two pixels and see what that does. You can see a much more dramatic difference if I put that on five or so. You see? So you have letter spacing and we also have word spacing and you can set that to whatever you want. Let's see 50 pixels and you'll see a big difference in the spacing between my words you see. Let's just make that 12 see what that looks like. Oh that's way too much. It's fine the default so I'll leave that in place just so you guys can reference it and then we also have color so you can set your color to whatever you want. I'll make mine a nice green or something something like that. Okay. Let's preview it. Oh, that's looking very nice. Now let's up the size on it. Font size, let's make it 18. Preview that. Alrighty. You can also make this P and H whatever you want. So you can remove the font size. If you wanted to have this P tag be instead an H2, you just turn those to H2 and then preview it. It'd be nice and big. Now let's add a shadow. Text shadow. And you'll have some problems with text shadow in Internet Explorer, and I'm not going into that in this video. So for text shadow, you could just set something like, let's say, two pixels, one pixel, two pixels, and then the color that you want for the shadow. I'll make mine black, and we'll see what that looks like. You see? So you can drop a shadow on it. Actually, it'd look a little better if I had this all at maybe one pixel, and this color a little bit lighter, like a a light gray or something. Let's see what that looks like. See? It's very pretty. And you can get creative as you want. So let's take that out. Okay, and that's pretty much all there is to it. I'll leave it just like that. This is the code that I'll have for you guys to grab if you want it. And that is that. And I'll see you guys in the next lesson.